Whether you're the reigning squat champion of the war market or you're dipping your toes into the live stream for the first time, Final Fantasy VII Remake is bound to overwhelm with its deceptively intricate combat system and steamiest of steampunk world design. Thankfully, we've put together a brief visitor's guide for everyone on board this train getting off at the seventh and final stop. Here are seven tips to make your time in Midgar, whether it's your first trip or your glorious homecoming, all the more accommodating. Clouds and Materia Girl First off, you should be equipping every Materia Orb you find early on. Gaining experience from killing enemies and using spells levels up each piece of Materia you have equipped, which allows you to cast more powerful versions of them. For example, for spells, Blizzard becomes Blizzara, Fire becomes Fira, and Cure becomes Cura. You should invest in leveling up spell materia as they're some of the strongest attacks in the game, and if you send a single spell into a cluster of enemies, you can sometimes kill two birds with one stone. Well, you know, a stone of materia. It's smart to equip everyone with healing materia so that you always have someone to help throw down in a pinch, and sticking specific characters with either thunder, blizzard, or fire so you know whose ATB bars to save for exploiting an enemy's weakness. Most enemies are usually weak to one of the three, so it helps to be prepared for anything. Even if you don't end up using some of them in the end, leveled up materia orbs are some of the most valuable items in the game, so you're welcome to sell the ones you've stopped using to various shopkeeps to get your fill of gil. One final note, be sure to purchase the barrier materia as soon as possible. You get this later on while progressing through the game as well, but you'll want to start leveling it up as soon as possible. Not only is it clutch as an early game defense bonus against physical attacks, but it's super helpful once you turn it into mana ward to halve incoming magic damage. So you can start taking on the VR challenges to unlock summons. Y'all better accessorize. Speaking of leveling up materia, the best way to do so is to have as many materia slots available on each character as possible. Even if you're low on gil, once you get to sector 7, be sure to purchase some iron bangles or star bracelets from the weapon shop to expand your available materia slots. Of course, these bump up your defense as well, but the goal is to equip more materia. Once you complete a few side missions, you should have enough gil to purchase armor upgrades for Clow, Barrett, and Tifa, so don't be stingy with your earnings. Don't neglect your side mish. But GameSpot, you might say, I don't want to do the side missions, I just want to experience the story. Well, have I got good news for you, Billy. The side missions are the story. Completing side missions is a win-win for everyone involved. First, they're a great opportunity to spend individual time with characters like Tifa, which adds to the rich history of Cloud's friendship with her. Second, you get some pretty serious materia, equipment, and weapon upgrades if you take the time to mitigate the concerns of Midgarians. While some of these might have you running around the streets like a slumcat millionaire, be sure to place extra care into helping out Shinra intern extraordinaire, Chadley, who will give the Assess Materia. Scan some enemies in battle for him and he'll use the data you collect to create new materia for a low price and give you access to special VR missions to unlock summoning spells. Upload your attacks to the cloud. As you'll quickly learn during early encounters, combat is a mix of action and turn-based decision-making. While on easier modes, smashing that square button might be enough to get by, but enemy encounters and bosses later on will knock you out faster than LL Cool J if you don't heed the potential of the game's full mechanics. First, make sure you're actively switching to your character's alternate attacks by using the triangle button. Cloud switches into his slower Punisher mode stance, which increases his damage and stagger output. On the other hand, Barrett unleashes a powerful charge shot, while Tifa strikes with a jaw-breaking uppercut. Second, try to always have your eye on each character's ATB meters on the bottom right of the screen. While you should maintain awareness of everyone's HP generally, you should actively pay attention to when you can use your party's abilities as much as possible. If you're focusing on Cloud, who's currently up close and personal with an opponent, hit the L2 or R2 buttons to quickly add a command to the Q, so Tifa can send in a Blizzard spell, or Barrett can heal up his spiky-haired bro on the front line. Character ATB meters charge slower if you're not directly controlling them to attack, so be sure to jump around from time to time to make sure you're personally engaging with them in the current fight. Dodge this. There's a materia you get early on called Deadly Dodge. It allows you to quickly pull off an area of effect physical attack after performing a dodge. 
I recommend giving this to Cloud immediately. Not only does he have the strongest physical attack in the early game, but because you control him in fights first by default, and you want him up close delivering damage, you can start most fights by rolling straight into the fray. No luck plus materia required here, as you slice and dice your foes. Spec yourself before you wreck yourself. Once Biggs and Wedge teach you how to upgrade your weapons, you'll want to take advantage of fleshing out your character's attributes every time you get a new weapon. Once you've better familiarized yourself with the combat system and your party's individual strengths and weaknesses, try to build out their specs to match a role in a fight. If you want my recommendations, I like leveling up Cloud's strength bonuses as a primary damage dealer, Tifa's ability to stagger, Barret's ability to deal tank damage, and Aerith's strength as a mage in the back row. With this configuration, a typical encounter with a mini-boss might play out in the following way. Cloud rushes forward, switching to Punisher mode to lay down some damage, Tifa builds up her ATB with standard attacks and then uses the Unbridled Strength ability to increase the enemy's stagger meter, and then Barret casts Thunder and takes pot shots from the back. Once the enemy is staggered and susceptible to damage, Cloud can then use a strong attack like Braver to deal massive damage. Tifa can pull off her beefed up combos and Barret can take care of any healing that the party might need. If you need a boost on stat points, be sure to smash every Shinra crate and open every chest you see as well. They'll sometimes drop Moogle medals, which you can use later on to buy stat upgrades for specific characters. Block enemies from damaging you. Lastly, here are some general tips for combat. As tempting as it may be to see those damage numbers fly, be on the lookout for any telltale signs that enemies exhibit when they're about to wind up a powerful attack, and try to block or dodge out of the way. With Cloud, you might want to consider blocking, as successfully blocking a physical attack at the last second will lower the amount of damage you take, while also delivering a modest counterattack. Some bosses and mini bosses almost require you to block and dodge to build up their stagger meters, so be mindful of what works best in the given combat situation. Also during boss fights, don't be afraid to get too liberal with healing spells and items. Things can go from bad to worse really quickly if one of your party members gets knocked out of a fight, requiring precious ATB bars to give them a phoenix down and another to cure them. Some bosses occasionally pull off random attacks that do massive damage, which can easily wipe out a character if they're resting comfortably with three quarters of their health remaining. If you're going to heal though, make sure you've got enough distance between yourself and the monster that's trying to hit you. If you're damaged during the casting animation, not only will it not go into effect, you'll lose the ATB meter you attempted to use. These are just a few tips to help you get started on the final fantastical journey ahead of you. What are some things you realized too late? Is there anything we missed? Otherwise, we hope you're enjoying this long-awaited remake as much as we are. Happy hunting, my avalanche inductees.